what are the steps you do? First thing is you determine the objectives. Now, what do you mean by objectives? Why am I doing this? Supposing the objective is to really develop a company that is uh, having a turnover of 5 crores to 50 crores. You have that as an objective, something that is measurable and something that is identifiable as well. So, something that can be identified. You can clearly be able to measure something. That is nothing but an objective. So, when you have something in mind that you want to achieve, in this case, is 50 crores, it is an objective. Then you look at what is called as a planning premises. What is a planning premises? Nothing but the conditions in which you are going to operate or the assumptions that you make. For example, if you are in a market where it is highly volatile, where the sudden changes happen, then you make assumptions or you plan for your course of action or your uh, approach in such an environment. So, that is nothing but a planning premises. What are the conditions that you have? You can have both internal or external. So, internal could be what is within your organization. The external could be what is outside the organization, maybe the market. So, planning premises is nothing but the conditions that you assume uh, or the conditions uh, that you think your particular plan will be executed. Now, another critical thing is alternatives. Have you heard of plan A and plan B? Every organization develops a set of options, a set of plans, uh, A, B and C. What, happen, what, what do we do? If plan A goes wrong, you use plan B or plan C. So, you first not only develop a plan, but you develop plans, which means that you have alternatives. And then once you have alternatives, you choose among them, you evaluate, then you actually look at derivative plans and then timing and sequence of operations. So, these are sort of things that are involved in a plan. So, planning is not just uh, a very simple activity. It is quite a complex activity. Why? Because you are actually making assumptions and these assumptions sometimes could not be uh, or may not be, uh, you know, the case when you actually come to the situation. That is one of the critics of planning itself. I mean, a lot of people say, why do we plan way ahead of ourselves when we know that things ahead of us may change suddenly. So, why do we spend so much time and resources? But that does not take away the idea of planning. That does not take away the importance of planning. It only uh, means that we need to have a more rugged or a more plan which can really change itself or a plan that can help us uh, accommodate ourselves in difficult situations. Now, we are going to look at the types of plans. We have the objectives. We have two types, one is the standing plans and one is the single use plans. What is a standing plan? This is nothing but it is established and exists for everything. So, you can consider this to be established, say a policy, something that uh, remains same irrespective of any, any department anything. Now, you can have something like a quality policy, something a total quality. So, quality at every stage. So, you have a standing plan which is common for uh, every department, for every person within the organization. Then you have a single use plan. Single use plan is something that you have for uh, a project, a project or a particular program or something like that. So, it is more related to a one-time use. This is constant and this could be a one-time use. Now, what is a policy, procedure, methods and rules? I am going to explain each in brief. A policy is something like an area or a framework under which you can work or something uh, that is the setting criteria, the most critical criteria. For example, if I say quality is a, is a policy that we have or, or we have a policy of resolving customer complaints within 10 days, that could be a policy. We have a policy of resolving customer complaints uh, within 10 days. Now, you would ask me what is a procedure? Now, policy says only in brief and it could be inter interpreted in different ways. Policy says 
you need to complete the resolving of customer queries or complaints within 10 days. It doesn't tell you exactly how to do it. That is when you have the procedure. Procedure tells you exactly how to do it. It tells you how the policies can be interpreted. So when you have the customer query, it has to be resolved in 10 days. What do you do? The procedure says, first thing, make a hard copy and a soft copy of the customer complaint. Determine if it is a, a difficult issue or a, a easy issue. Then you allot the thing to the respective team. See to that the team has its resources to complete the job within say five days. So maximum uh, of six days with one day buffer and make sure everything is resolved and the customer is informed during the process. So that is a procedure. Method. Method is nothing but the best way of doing something. So there may, there may be different ways in which you do it, but there could be the best method or the best practice. That is nothing but the method. Rules are things that you do or you don't do. So if you have a rule that at every day you need to update the customer, then it's something that you have to do. The other thing is you have something that you should not do. So any by any chance you should not reveal any of the details of your customer to another customer. So that is a rule. So something that you have to do and something you should not do is nothing but a rule. So single-use plans on the other hand is for a program. So if you have a program for developing uh, your managers, you have an employee development program or uh, something that is used to train people. That could be a program. Budget, what are the budget, what are the limits financially uh, and time, time wise as well products and strategies are nothing but the approach. These are some of the things that are related to the standing plans which are constant, established and single use plans which are for, meant for projects or programs.